May I present to you Garrick Merrifield, a.k.a. Walmart Jim Jones, who made his mark on TLC's Seeking Sister Wife by brainwashing his wife Danielle into thinking Jesus wanted him to find a hot Latina to stick his in. I'm totally confident this is what God wanted for me and my family. Hmm. Oh, this is awkward. I'm sorry, it's the... It's the pleats. It's time for me to have Roberta all to myself. A lot of the scriptures, the terms where it says he fills you with the Holy Ghost, it's actually a sexual term. That fear comes at me like, you should wait. But if God tells you to do something, you do it. It actually means like sperm. I want you to feel confident that she's not going to be cast aside. It was like I was intruding. This couple has had me on the edge of my seat for three seasons now as they write their own 90 Day Fiance script complete with visa drama, accusations of being used for money, as well as a mountain of miscommunication, because, well, when you're Walmart Jim Jones, the only women you can convince to join your wannabe cult are women who literally don't understand what they're getting into. The Mirrorfields debuted on the third season of Seeking Sister Wife as a Christian family that realized God told Garrick he needed to stick his face in some hot Brazilian boobs. Isn't God just there for you when you need a hot Brazilian bombshell? Now, this show portrays a lot of different types of couples. It's as much a show about polyamory as it is about sister wives and polygamy. Part of the reason why is because they cycle through couples the way I cycle through excuses for why I didn't work out. None of the couples from the first two seasons are still on the show. They're constantly on the lookout for new couples. And they've gotten so desperate. On season five, we've got a married couple that's just a bi chick who's wanting to explore her sexuality. Like, that's what they're calling a sister wife now? Season six is just gonna be a couple of lesbians in their knitted sweater collection. Like, this is my knitted gray cat sister wife. This is my Christmas sweater sister wife. By season seven, they'll just be trying to convince us every middle-aged lady with a vegetable garden is a polygamist. But the real stars in this arena aren't the hippy dippy we just want to share our love in a 40 foot bed on a commune couple no the real stars of polygamy are the ones that do it for religion and i'm not saying there's any difference between cody brown and nick davis who is also from seeking sister wife and it's very upfront about the reason he has sister multiple wives uh to satisfy his ding dong i think they're all the same. But when they're willing to go on national television and say, Jesus wanted me to stick my in other women. Oh my God. That is true dumpster fire reality TV gold. When it's like, oh, I'm not doing this for me. I'm barely even considered sticking my in other women. Living a plural lifestyle is a great way to follow Christ and to be like him. Um, I'm not the best preacher's kid, but I don't remember Jesus being a polygamist. I was led to believe the man didn't even date. Oh, oh yeah, good one, Garrick. Tell her Jesus was a polygamist. She'll never even question it. You know, being a polygamist is really, you know, a great way to, you know, follow Christ and, you know, be like Christ. And, you know, it's uh, the second I am inside Roberta, I know I'm gonna be like, oh yes, Jesus. The Merrifield storyline for the third and fourth seasons of Seeking Sister Wife revolves around their progressing relationship with a Brazilian woman named Roberta. The Merrifields are going to go on several trips to Mexico under the guise of getting to know her. By season four, they're not even pretending anymore. They're like, we're going to Mexico so Garrett can bang a baby into Roberta. Me and Roberta decided together, we're gonna go ahead and plan a trip to Mexico with her without the visa to try to have a baby. Look like you're okay with this. Look like you're okay with this. Look like you're okay with this. Of course, all of these trips are filled with chaos and drama as Danielle finally starts to realize exactly what it is she's signed up for. The night you slept in our room before you came back, we had an intimate moment. And you guys should have just told me we want to be intimate. On their first trip to Mexico, Roberta goes out of her way to make sure Danielle doesn't think Roberta and Garrick are just dying to get away from Danielle so they can go f each other, even though <laughs> that is exactly what's going on here. <laughs> and even though that's exactly what's about to happen and that's totally what's going on, Roberta 
feels guilty and somehow convinces Danielle to stay the first night her and Garrick are supposed to be alone together with them in their hotel room. And when Danielle goes back to her hotel room to change in her pajamas, Roberta and Garrick famously have a quickie in the five minute interim. <laughs> <laughs> Roberta felt very sensitive towards Danielle's feelings. Danielle tried to resist. It was funny to see them both debate with each other. There was like a healthy debate between two uh, beautiful women. My penis was the moderator. <laughs> Danielle had to go back and get her stuff, so me and Roberta were able to be into it uh, quickly before Danielle came back. It was a good laugh. After Danielle went to get her stuff, uh, me and Roberta were able to be intimate. It was a good laugh. We were like, <laughs> You'll never get the chance to treat me like I'm a piece of shit again. Don't call my mother house. Again. Roberta, who we later find out has been squeezing these fools for money the whole time and good for her, decides she feels guilty for the one bump and is like, I'm gonna go ahead and tell Danielle about our secret hookup through a translator app while trying to Kayla after our camel ride on the beach. <laughs> it goes very poorly. Danielle is rightly peeved. It makes her look desperate and delusional, which she is. But on the other hand, why? Why did you have to ask her to come back to the room with you? What if she had come back and caught you guys and we wouldn't have gotten to see that on camera? How terrible would that have been? You're trying to be selfish. Roberta's trying to be selfless. But then in the end, I ended up feeling ridiculous. But at the same time, Danielle is hard to feel sorry for because She's so in denial of the fact that she's attached herself to a human Brazilian butt-seeking missile. Oh, Brazilian it is. I'm back. Now, they meet in Mexico a lot because that's the easiest place for Roberta to travel to. And on one of these Mexican getaways, there is a scene that I could not get out of my head. And it's the scene of Roberta in a bikini splashing around in the pool with Garrick and Danielle's two sons. And it's like, <laughs> isn't this just such family wholesome fun, right? Like me and my string bikini and the boys and Garrick staring at us. <laughs> this is such family fun. Oh my God, we're such a strong Christian family. I couldn't figure out why this scene creeped me out so much. And then it hit me. Fear. This scene reminds me of the pool scene from the 1990s thriller Fear, starring Reese Witherspoon and Marky Mark, Mark Wahlberg, as a crazy psycho. Even though Roberta tells us that she's not gonna do the sister wife thing if she thinks Danielle is only doing it for Garrick and Danielle basically admits that she's only doing it for Garrick slash it's written all over her face. Things seem to be going pretty smooth for the Merrifields. That is until Danielle makes the strategic move of getting Garrick to pursue a third sister wife. And Danielle approached me and said, hey, I think maybe God wants us to get another wife. I was shocked. When you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. Now this is when Danielle activates and finally comes alive. Danielle was over in the corner crying like, oh, he likes Roberta's tan ass more than my pasty one. And Whoopi came up and said, if you want to be somebody and you want to go somewhere, you better wake up and pay attention. If you wanna be somebody, if you wanna go somewhere, better wake up and pay attention. Danielle wakes up, tells Garrick, we should start pursuing another sister wife while we're waiting for all this immigration stuff to come through. And this is how I know it's a strategic move on her part because she says on the show, she justifies it to Garrick saying, we need another person so that I don't have to be lonely when you're with Roberta. What's funny is Roberta 
clearly had no idea she was going to be competing with anyone except wife number one, who Garrick, you know, clearly had lost a spark for. And when Roberta finds out that Garrick kissed a potential third wife, things begin to unravel. Now, the big key background information with this potential Plague family is that in season three, Garrick convinces Danielle to divorce him legally so that they can go after a K-1 visa for Roberta. Basically, Danielle has gone full Mary Brown. She's given up her legal marriage. Nobody knows how they divided the assets or the kids. That is left a mystery. But like Mary, Danielle is very upset about the legal divorce. And this is going to play into Danielle's season four finale reaction when Roberta drops a bomb on them. As season four progresses, the editors start sprinkling little hints here and there that uh, Roberta might not make it to America. Like showing Danielle constantly saying, um, I'm I'm thinking Roberta might not make it to America. I have my concerns if she'll actually, you know, book the ticket and just commit to coming. Part of Roberta's storyline is that she's been taking care of her mother in Brazil, who is elderly and not in like amazing health. And that's making it really hard for her to pick up and basically abandon her to go be Garrick's sex wife in the United States. But Garrick and Danielle, pff, couldn't care less. We don't hear a peep from them about how this could do harm to Roberta's mom. All Danielle does is, I hope sister comes. I hope sister isn't lying to us. While Garrick bugs his eyes out like a creep. Like, well, I guess we'll have to kidnap her if, uh, I mean, God said she belongs on my d Now, I would love to believe that Roberta was just scamming them this whole time. I mean, they are going to reveal that she got... $10,000 in one transaction from them right before dipping on coming to America. It's what she deserves. But I also want to give props to Danielle for her strategic move. Because it's not just the idea, as we all know from Survivor. You can't just have the strategy part. You also have to have the ability to make the maneuver, to successfully perform the maneuver. And when Roberta tells them she's still upset about them pursuing a third wife, Danielle plays this perfectly. I guess I feel confused because I thought you said that so many times, that's just getting to know someone. I, for one, am shocked, shocked that this is still an issue for you, Roberta. The way she totally turns the tables on her. It's never her timing, it's God's timing. And this is how you successfully handle a husband having a favorite wife. You bring a new wife into the equation, which is probably exactly what Mary was trying to do when she brought in Robin. On the last trip they ever have with Roberta, the three of them have this very harrowing goodbye in the middle of the streets uh, in Brazil in front of their Airbnb. It's almost like in this moment, they all know she's not going to be coming to America. It is such a dramatic scene. I mean, they are giving everything here. Except Danielle. Danielle is saving a little bit for her big finale moment. <laughs> The way the Merrifields turn on Roberta so fast and so hard is honestly breathtaking. They go from a borderline obsession with her and oh my God, she's the one. We know she's the one. God told us she's the one. They just like, like a switch is flipped. And it's like, she can die. She is the worst. She's evil. She's the reason Michigan still has Flint in their water. How could you do this to me? Question mark. By this point in the show, everyone has kind of caught on about what a creep Garrick is. I mean, they concocted this whole plan to have Garrick try to impregnate Roberta on one of their spring break getaways, even after Garrick admitted to Danielle that, oh yeah, uh, if she can't get into America, I'm just gonna leave you. I'm just gonna go li live with her. I mean, I can't be away from my boobies. I mean, my baby. At this point, is when I turn on Danielle. He tells you he's going to leave you. You start the show off saying, oh, my number one fear is that Garrick will just leave me for another woman. He tells you, uh, I'm gonna leave you for another woman. And she still stays with them. She's like, great, as Jesus foretold. When Roberta gets $10,000 out of them and then is like, so about me coming to America, actually, I'm not coming. And this is a breakup text. Danielle's heart is so broken. She has to prop a phone up and turn on the camera. <laughs> Oh, I see. I don't understand. She said that my sister. She lied. She lied. She lied. She lied. She lied. 
How could she? I don't understand. I thought she was my sister. How could she? <laughs> she lied. She lied. She didn't know about me. Like, ma'am, you just had the wherewithal to set up a camera. I mean, thank you, Danielle. Like, you are really leaning into the reality star thing, and I appreciate it. But also, the fifth season has already debuted, and <sighs> Garrick is on one this year. First, Garrick wanted to just dive back into dating right away. Being dumped by Roberta. <laughs> Means nothing to this guy. This guy takes one look at the text, is like, well, on to Roberta number two. I was like, maybe we should wait a little bit. <laughs> Over my dead body. And even though they lost Roberta, it seems to have made Garrick even more delusionally confident. Like he's out here giving us Garrick's pervert interpretations of the scriptures 101. Scripture is the terms where it says he fills you with the Holy Ghost. It's actually a sexual term. It actually means like sperm. stopped feeling sorry for Danielle lately is that she obviously knows this is none of God's plan. Like, Roberta falls through and they're like, well, any warm Brazilian body will do. Like, how was that God's plan? How You said God's plan was Roberta. Now you're just like forgetting about all the times you said Roberta was God's plan? I think we're both nervous about meeting Roberta for the first time. Roberta, oh my God. Danielle's like, whoops, I uh, meant Natalia, but doesn't matter. Any warm body that'll give my husband a beer, right? You know how I double dog for sure triple down? No, it's any warm body. Because Garrick tells us he's planning on proposing to Roberta number two before even meeting her. I mean, Walmart Jim Jones is on a mission. I got permission for my wife to bang other women, and by God, I am gonna bang other women. I mean, Brazilians to be specific. Of course, when Roberta number two fails to make it to Mexico on her first attempt, Garrick starts crying like a baby, cause that's all Garrick and Danielle do anymore. Just cry, cry, cry. They're constantly crying. They're constantly crying all the time because they suck as cult leaders, okay? You suck at leading a cult. They can't get anyone to move to Colorado. They can't even get them in America. Now, I've been hearing some stuff online that the drama is about to be amped up even more with the Merrifields, and I'm not gonna lie, I am here for it. I'm here for this craziness with Eric and Danielle. I will be keeping my eyes on these two the rest of the season to see what goes down with them. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you stay up to date on all of my content.